So it's day 22. So far I've had five red days, 14 yellow days and only two green days. Wow, I really suck at eating healthy. Okay, maybe it wasn't that bad. I tracked my blood sugar for four weeks and in this video I will tell you why I did that, how it works and what I learned. So first my why. You know, health is often claimed as one of the most important values in life, but often we don't act like it. At least I didn't. And eating is a very big part in being healthy and also staying healthy. And I suspected that I didn't eat as healthy as I could. You know, with time pressure at the job, it's not always easy to sustain a healthy lifestyle. And preparing food takes a lot of planning and it also takes a lot of time and to be honest I'm not a big fan of cooking and the problem with eating is that there are no immediate consequences you know at the time we don't recognize if our blood sugar is high or not I mean you might feel a little tired and also unable to concentrate but I don't think we necessarily blame the blood sugar for that the consequences medium term can be gaining weight and in the long term we could actually get quite sick but then it'll be too late an unhealthy diet can lead to serious diseases in the future one of them being diabetes 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 is a disease with a kind of dysregulation of the blood sugar. So basically over time what happens is that your body is not able anymore to like store the sugar and then the sugar circulates in the blood and sugar is actually quite damaging to the blood vessels. And therefore the really long term consequences of diabetes are damages of the brain like a stroke, damages of the heart like a heart attack, damage of the eyes, you can actually be blinded and also of the kidneys and of the nerves. So there really can be some long term damages to our health. Also so, you know as being a doctor myself I'm eager to prevent everything that can be prevented so how does that work I stumbled upon a startup that's called hello inside they're using the continuous glucose monitoring to get to know your body better of course I knew of this method because measuring blood sugar for diabetes patients is mandatory and at the time this continuous glucose monitoring also called CGM revolutionized diabetes care patients don't need drains of blood of their finger anymore to measure their blood glucose like three times a day they can just use the CGM which is a little patch with a needle and a chip and then the needle goes under the skin and measures the blood glucose and the chip is connected to your phone via Bluetooth and so it can just measure every minute without having to drain blood all the time so I used hello inside this is not sponsored by the way I know one of the founders I interviewed her once but she didn't know about me using this and making a video about it until I sent it to her so I ordered the kit online and they're using the free Libre 3 from Abbott, which is, you know, a sensor for CGM. Then I downloaded three apps, the Hello Inside app, the free Libre 3 app, and then, you know, the test flight app for better testing. The nice thing about this free Libre 3 sensor is that it can be used for 14 days, which is one of the longest on the market. Hello Inside offers two programs. One of them is called Hello Sugar, and it's for 14 days, and the other one's called Hello Hormones, and it's for 28 days. So they deliver two of those sensors. And then first, the sensor needs to be connected to the free Libre 3 app. It starts measuring about after one hour and then you can connect the Hello Inside app to the free Libre 3 app and the measurement of the blood sugar appears in both apps. Theoretically one can also use like just free Libre app especially when Hello Inside is not available in your country and I think at the moment it's only available in Europe. To use the CGM, this continuous glucose monitoring, I'm not sure if you need a prescription. It, it might differ from country to country. What I liked about Hello Inside was that they have a lot of features. For example, with every meal you take, you can take a picture of that meal and then you can log in all the different components of that meal and they give you an analysis of like right amount of fat, right amount of sugar, right amount of protein and that's quite nice. Then after about two or three hours, the app gives you a color graded rating of the food or meal you had. You get green when your blood sugar stayed in a certain range. You get yellow when it stayed under a certain value but went over the like green space and you get red if your blood sugar went crazy. Also every week you get a scorecard mailed to you where you have a summary of the whole week and how it went. And the thing I loved about it was the gamification, you know, the different colors, the visualization, the motivational phrases. They should not be underestimated. They also have a list of experiments that you can do. For example, have a portion of pasta and at another time have a portion of pasta that is, you know, that is not the usual kind of pasta, but that's a pasta that's partly made out of lentils or other kinds of vegetables and then you can prepare how your blood sugar reacted. 
You can also do it, for example, with milk chocolate and dark chocolate, all kinds of fruits, fresh fruits and dried fruits. You can prepare only fruits and then fruits added with some protein and some fat. And that can give you some very revealing information. Your glucose measurements are safe all the time. So you can go back a couple of days, a couple of weeks and still see them. That's not possible in the free Leap with 3 app. My biggest learnings. I actually switched back to cow milk or soy milk. A couple of years ago, I started to drink oat milk and almond milk and I put it in my tea for example or in my oats and in the tea for example the blood sugar didn't actually rise that high but after quite a while my blood sugar crashed and that's not ideal because right at the time when it crashes that's when you develop cravings. With cow milk and almond milk, my blood sugar was very stable. The reason is that almond milk and also cow milk don't just have the carbohydrates, but they also have quite a high amount of protein or fat or both. And almond milk, as well as oat milk, you know, they have just a lot of carbohydrates, but none of the other, or at least not as much from the other. And that's causing the higher blood sugar. That's what I learned in the app, because they also have some information guides. Another thing that I don't eat as regular as before is oats and this came as a total surprise for me because you know I I thought I had a really healthy breakfast with my oats and almond milk and nuts and apple and raisins and I tried several different things I put out the raisins I switched the milks and still there was quite a curve for my blood sugar the best option of all of those was whole grain oats so if I eat them I choose the whole grain oats another change that I made and this didn't come as a surprise for me I don't eat bread anymore because bread did not even work together with fat and protein. Still my blood sugar went up. For me actually it was a nice confirmation because I didn't like to eat a lot of breads before. Only very occasionally because I, I don't know, I feel stuffed when I eat it. So the two most ideal breakfasts for me were just curd with some apple and cinnamon and nuts. And the other one which actually gave me a 10 out of 10 rating was shakshuka, which is very nice because I love shakshuka. I think what also might have worked is eggs and beans, but I didn't get the chance to try it out. Next up is sweets. You know, I really am a sucker for chocolate and not surprisingly at all, the milk chocolate did not very well. But what actually worked really well was dark chocolate. And also a nice alternative for me in the afternoon is a nut bar. So of course, I will keep treating myself to some milk chocolate once in a while. I'll just try to reduce it to like, I don't know, once every two or three weeks. And in between, when and I can't live without, I'll just stick to dark chocolate. Okay, the absolutely biggest surprise was that actually salty stuff made my blood sugar go way more crazy than the sweet stuff. So this one evening I prepared some food, which I also thought was actually healthy because it's all vegetables with some China spices. And I got so hungry that I ate chips before. And it wasn't even potato chips, it was a bean salty never fried snack. And my blood sugar went up to over 170 milligrams per deciliter. That's a lot higher than milk chocolate did. And that was really interesting. And it happened again with potato chip. Thankfully I easily can live without chips, so no problem there. Then another big surprise was a poke bowl, which I would have considered quite healthy. Maybe it was the rice, I don't know. And you also these ready-to-cook vegetables or these ready-to-cook salads also were not working well. A big surprise in the sweets department, in the positive sense, was that a white chocolate mocha from Starbucks actually wasn't as bad as I expected and neither was the brownie with it. The patterns I noticed during the day and also during the night were that first, if my blood sugar was already out of range in the morning, it was harder throughout the day to keep it on track and the second thing was if I eat sweets in the evening like very late in the evening I tended to under sugar at night and in the first few days I thought it was you know maybe just normal that my blood sugar is around 70 in the night but actually over time it improved to over 80 which it should be overnight so that was surprising and I had one really scary moment it was at night when my blood sugar dropped around 50 and I didn't know at the time but I almost woke up and I was like I was shivering and that's actually the kind of symptoms that diabetes patients get when they under sugar too so that was really memorable and also a huge insight because I mean otherwise I maybe would have thought okay I was freezing or something but then to see this value in the next morning I was like okay wow that's because I under sugared so now I try to don't eat anything after 8 p.m. also interesting and I also learned that in the app that timing matters. And for me, for example, potatoes work better at noon than in the evening. Now the Hello Inside app also gives some glucose hacks 
For example, they recommend to take a walk after a meal or to have a salad as an appetizer, you know, fiber first. And maybe I was trying them in the right way, but those two didn't work for me. If I had a very healthy salad and milk chocolate afterwards, my blood sugar still went crazy. There was the huge difference for me. Another tip is to drink water with an ounce of apple cider vinegar, like 30 minutes before the meal, but I didn't get the chance to try that. Actually, those four weeks passed pretty quickly. If you want to run a lot of experience, it's kind of a tough schedule. So if you have any experiences with measuring your blood sugar, feel free to comment down below. I put a link to Hello Inside down in the video description. If you're looking for another way to overlook your sugar intake, I've linked a video to this here. Hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video. Bye bye.